Welcome back to the channel, and thank you for joining me today as we take a deep dive into one of the most intriguing yet often forgotten fighter jet prototypes in American aviation history. I am talking about the Curtis XP-87 Blackhawk. This aircraft was designed in the late 1940s, in a period when jet technology was still in its infancy but evolving at a blistering pace. It was a time when the United States was rapidly transitioning from piston-powered fighters that had dominated World War II into an entirely new age of jet propulsion, speed, and high-altitude performance. The Curtis XP-87 Blackhawk was part of this ambitious push. It was bold, it was innovative, and it carried the dream of Curtis Wright to remain a major player in the post-war jet fighter market. But like so many prototypes, it never entered full-scale production, and its story has largely been overshadowed by the successful designs of its competitors. Still, it remains a fascinating chapter in the evolution of American fighter jets. And in this video, we will explore everything about the Blackhawk, its design, development, performance, the reasons it failed, and even what its estimated cost in US dollars would have been had it entered service. The Curtis XP-87 Blackhawk was conceived as a long-range, all-weather jet-powered escort and interceptor. The U.S. Army Air Forces, which would soon become the U.S. Air Force, had learned hard lessons during World War II. Heavy bombers like the B-17 Flying Fortress and the B-24 Liberator needed fighter escorts to survive against enemy interceptors. And with the introduction of jets by Germany in the final years of the war, the demand for jet-powered escort fighters became urgent. Curtis, a company that had once been at the forefront of fighter design with legendary aircraft like the P-40 Warhawk, saw an opportunity to re-establish itself as a leader. The XP-87 was their bold answer. Physically, the Blackhawk was unlike many of its contemporaries. It was a large twin-engine jet fighter with straight wings, a long fuselage, and a distinctive nose design. It was designed as a two-seat aircraft, which was somewhat unusual for fighters of its era. One seat was for the pilot and the other for the radar operator, as the aircraft was envisioned as an all-weather interceptor that could fly long missions, track enemy aircraft using radar, and engage them even at night or in poor visibility. At a time when radar technology was still heavy and bulky, having two crew members made sense. The inclusion of radar was one of the defining features of the Blackhawk and represented the growing emphasis on electronic systems in aerial warfare. The prototype was first flown in 1948, powered initially by two Westinghouse XJ3 4WE7 turbojet engines. These engines provided a thrust of about 3,750 pounds each, which was not particularly powerful for such a large airframe. The aircraft was heavy, and as a result, performance in its early tests was disappointing. Curtis knew they needed more thrust, so the design was later modified to accept two Allison J35 engines, each producing about 4,000 pounds of thrust. This improved performance somewhat, but the XP-87 still lagged behind competitors like the Northrop F-89 Scorpion, which would eventually be chosen for production. Let's talk about its size and weight, because this is one of the reasons the XP-87 stood out. The aircraft had a wingspan of about 56 feet and a length of roughly 63 feet. That made it a very large fighter, more akin to a light bomber in some respects. Its empty weight was around 24,000 pounds, and its maximum takeoff weight approached 35,000 pounds. Compare that to fighters like the early F-86 Sabre, which had a maximum takeoff weight of under 20,000 pounds, and you start to see the difference. The Blackhawk was massive, and this affected everything from maneuverability to speed to production cost. In terms of armament, the XP-87 was designed with heavy firepower in mind. Early concepts envisioned the aircraft carrying 620mm cannons mounted in the nose. These would have provided devastating firepower against enemy bombers. Some proposals even suggested equipping the aircraft with air-to-air -air rockets, which were being developed in the late 1940s as a means of increasing kill probability. However, the rocket technology of the era was not yet mature, and cannons remained the primary choice. The heavy nose armament gave the Blackhawk a menacing appearance and reflected the U.S. Air Force's emphasis on bomber interception. Now, let us consider its performance numbers. With the J-35 engines, the XP-87 had a maximum speed of about 600 miles per hour, which was respectable for its size but not exceptional compared to lighter fighters. Its service ceiling was around 40,000 feet, 
allowing it to engage high-altitude bombers. Range was projected at over 2,000 miles with drop tanks, which was critical for its escort mission. But while these numbers look decent on paper, in practice the Blackhawk simply did not perform as well as its competition. Maneuverability was sluggish, climb rate was poor, and acceleration left much to be desired. In an era when speed and agility were becoming increasingly important, the XP-87 just could not keep up. One of the key aspects of this story is cost. The Curtis XP-87 never entered production, so there is no official unit cost. However, based on comparable aircraft of its time, we can make an estimate. The Northrop F-89 Scorpion, which won the competition and entered service, had an approximate unit cost of about 1.2 million US dollars in the early 1950s. Adjusted for inflation, that would be roughly 14 million dollars per aircraft today. Given that the XP-87 was of similar size, complexity, and mission profile, it is reasonable to estimate that each Blackhawk would have cost in the range of 1.1 to 1.4 million dollars at the time. In modern terms, that would translate to about 13 to 16 million dollars per aircraft. For the U.S. Air Force, this was a huge investment, and only the most capable designs could justify such spending. Unfortunately for